Hi and welcome to Data Garden. Thank you for checking out my video. In today's tutorial, we will once again be working with RStudio, and the goal is to get a bit into organizing data and data frames. Now there are two specific things that we want to do, and those are rearranging columns in a data frame and also changing the column names of data frames. Now in this tutorial we will be working with the Swiss data set and that is included in our studio so we can load it up with the data command and the data set is called Swiss. So press run and we can click on it to load it in the console. And as you can see here in the row names, we have different provinces of Switzerland. These are only the French speaking provinces. And then we have um, six different socioeconomic variables. Now, in case you're wondering, these have been measured in the year 1888. So it's been more than 130 years ago now. So that's why, for example, the infant mortality is maybe a little bit high for today's standard. Now, this data set has one problem already built in that we want to get rid of first. And that is that the province is in the row names instead of as a column. This would lead to problems, for example, if we would want to work with um, the aggregate function, for example, or uh, many different other uh, functions that you can only apply to a column and not to the row names. So let's first create a new column in the dataset Swiss. So we type Swiss and with the dollar operator, uh, we type province, which of course has not been created yet. And we assign that with the value row names of Swiss, like this. Press run and Let's have a look at the viewer. As you can see, we have just created a column called province. Now, obviously now we don't need the row names anymore, so we can also delete them. So we do this by typing, uh, sorry, row names of Swiss, and we assign that with a null, N-U-L-L. Press run. And there you can see the row names are gone, and we now just have the standard row numbers as our row names. Now, I always recommend you to use this format because, as I've just said, there are many functions that you cannot apply to row names, but only to a column. Now, in the next step, we may want to reorder the columns. For example, that we have the province as a final column is maybe a bit um, annoying. Maybe we would rather have it as a first column. And we can do this by assigning a new order of the data set Swiss uh, to the name Swiss. So we type Swiss and then we use this assign operator and we type Swiss and then we use the square brackets and as you know, in these brackets, we first have to define the rows that we want to use and then the columns separated by a comma. Now, in this case, we obviously want all of the rows. So we just type comma. And then we define a vector in which we uh, state the order of the columns that we want to have. So we create a vector by using the command C. And then within the brackets, we type seven because the first column that we want is the province which is the seventh column and then we type one two three four five six press run and there we have it now there's a slightly easier way to do this so let's maybe first run the first three lines again to restore the original order and now instead of typing here 1, 2, 3 and so on, we could also create a new vector within the vector and just type 1 to 6 like this. 
So as you can see, it then has two closing brackets, one for the outer vector and one for the inner vector. And press run. And obviously the order is the same now. Now there's one problem with this uh, method of ordering, um, ordering columns. And that is, what if the source um, the source data frame changes columns. For example, right now we're using an integrated data set from R, but what if we were using an Excel file that other people are working with? And they may, may add a column here and there later on in the process. And then when you re-execute the code, R will use this exact order again, but maybe it's wrong then because uh, some things have changed. So a different way of ordering your um, ordering your columns is the following. The basic method is the same. We type Swiss and then assign Swiss and then the square brackets, comma, vector. But we can also, instead of typing the numbers of the columns, actually type province. And as you can see, um, actually, I'm going to repeat this. Province, and then we get the recommendation here already. And when we click on it, it will immediately change it to a, a string in quotation marks. And then we type comma. And then let's say we want education next. And then examination. and then agriculture, and then infant mortality, and finally fertility. And actually, I think one is missing. Uh, yes, Catholic is missing. So let's add this one and press run. And as you can see, we have just changed the order once more. Now, I think this one is the best way of doing it because if something in your source file changes, then I will not just rearrange the, um, the columns nonetheless, but it will give you an error or it will leave out the column if there's a new one added that we don't really need for our analysis. So this is probably the safest way of uh, rearranging columns. Now in the next step, we may want to rename some of the columns. Now the names here aren't per se bad, but maybe we want to replace the dot in infant mortality with an underscore. And maybe let's say we want to change the name Catholic to percentage Catholic so that it becomes a bit more clear what the column is showing. Now the standard way for going about this would be to type uh, call names which is a command of Swiss and then we assign that a vector of the length seven because we have seven columns and we would just type all of the original names. In this case, we can actually just uh, copy paste them if we want to. So copy, and then I have to remove this actually, paste. And then I swap here the dot for the underscore. And here I type percentage Catholic and we press run and there we have just changed the column names. Now once again there's a little bit of a disadvantage to this um, option of doing it and that is what happens if for example we are a bit uh, sleepy and we forget to type the name for examination in our command here for the column names. So we just have 
the vector of the length 6 instead of 7 as we needed. You can actually try this and press run. And as you can see, R just assigns the six values that we have defined to the first six columns and the seventh one doesn't get a column name. Now, obviously, everything that we do from there on will be wrong because uh, what we see here, for example, now as the percentage Catholic is not actually the percentage Catholic. It's a different variable. It's actually fertility. So we have to be very careful with this when we change our column names, uh, column names like this. Also, once again, if we reload the data set and it has uh, one more column because something changed in the raw data that we import, uh, and then we change the column names, uh, they will once again be all wrong. So please be careful when you change your column names like this. So let's actually restore the original um, version before the, we change the call names. So we run these commands again. And now instead of um, changing all of the column names, we can also just, just change the two that we want. For example, in this case, five and seven. Now the way we do this would be by typing call names of Swiss and then after the closing bracket we do the square brackets and we type a vector C 5 comma 7 and after the uh, closing square bracket we define that as a vector um, with the values infant mortality comma percentage Catholic press run and as you can see the column names five and seven have been changed now this is a little bit easier than the last version because we have to type a bit less and uh, we are we don't have as much room for errors, but there's still some room for errors here because what if column five is now something different because our raw data has changed. In this case, um, probably the best way of assigning column names is the following. So we type call names of Swiss again, and we once again use the square brackets, but instead of just choosing uh, the numbers, we type call names of Swiss and then two equal signs. And then we type the name that we want to change. Let's say we want to change the name infant mortality here back to um, infant mortality with a dot. So. So let's um, have a look at this for a moment. So we change the call names of Swiss, the column names, but in the square brackets, we select which ones. And in this case, we want only the column names of Swiss that are exactly infant mortality. Uh, so this also means that in this, for this method, we can only change one name at a time because column names have to be unique in R and if we want to have the exact one that is infant mortality then we can only change one column name at a time and we define that as infant dot mortality press run and as you can see we have changed it back to the original name now, the big advantage of this method is that if the order of the columns changes or if there's another column added or something like this, this will not change anything. This command will still function perfectly and we do not have to be afraid that we accidentally change the wrong column name. 
So I recommend you, especially if you work with bigger data sets, that you always use this method to change your column names. So this is about everything that I wanted to show you in this tutorial. It has been quite quick, but I think there's some very essential information for working with data frames in R. I hope you have found this video helpful. If you have, then please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more content of this type, then make sure to subscribe to the channel because I have more content of this uh, series, R Basics, coming up very soon. So stay tuned for that and have a nice day. Bye bye.